Hello and welcome back. So it's American Thanksgiving, and that means that if your team is in a playoff spot at this point in the season, they have a 77.5% chance of making the playoffs. And I wanted to dive into team-level data to take a look at which teams are for real and which teams are pretenders. And today we'll be looking at defensive metrics. In terms of fantasy hockey, that will help us make better decisions about goaltending going forward. It's been a very difficult year to uh, evaluate goaltending and try to help your team succeed in fantasy using your three goaltenders that you usually want to use. Um, so this is going to help you out, especially if you've been struggling lately with your goaltending. Now, very quick introduction. This isn't necessarily going to be an evaluation of different goaltending numbers, raw numbers, and things like that, but it's going to be a look at teams and team level data and to show you which teams are playing good defense. And typically you want to have your fantasy goaltenders playing on teams that are playing good defense, as opposed to a goaltender who's very talented and skilled, but whose team is getting shelled on a regular basis. So let's take a look at some of the data and dive right in. Now, what you're looking at is a dashboard that I've created using data from moneypuck.com. They're an excellent resource. Uh, if you don't use them, there's a number of different things that you can look at, but sometimes it gets a little convoluted. So I'm going to show you how to use the data to make better decisions for your fantasy team. So what you're looking at, we have actual goals against, expected goals against, high danger shots against, and D-zone giveaways. So let's start with D-zone giveaways, and this will bring me to a point that kind of uh, struck home last night. I've been saying for a while now that the Montreal goaltending, despite the fact that both goalies are playing well above expected, uh, you don't want to own them and you don't want to pick them up on waivers because their team is just not playing well in front of them. So you can see that here. This is defensive zone giveaways. They are almost 100 higher than the third or fourth place teams in terms of D zone giveaways. So that is alarming. If you own either of these goalies, you should probably try to drop them. Uh, they're probably not your G1 or your G2. You're probably streaming them and you probably should stop that. Uh, this means that your teams are giving the puck away a ton in their own zone, and that leads to high danger chances against. So Montreal is worst in the league at allowing high danger shots. Uh, so that's another uh, thing that you want to try to stay away from in terms of picking your fantasy goaltending. And Montreal's a 500 team right now. They're kind of within, uh, you know, spitting distance of a playoff spot, but I can't see them making the playoffs if they're going to continue playing defense like this. Ottawa's another team that you don't want to have their goaltending, despite the fact that Anton Forsberg is playing above expected and you probably drafted Cam Talbot, uh, held on to him on IR, and you don't want to drop him right now. But both of these teams are giving up a ton of high danger shots against. Same with Philly, and that's a little bit different because Carter Hart has actually been a pretty good fantasy goalie. So let's take a deeper look into Carter Hart and what's going on here. So here you can see Carter Hart used to be in the top like five in terms of goaltending. Now he's down to 109 overall, uh, and he's below some of these other guys that have started to climb up ahead of him. And why that's happening is because Philly is giving up a ton of high danger shots against. So he's constantly having to make not just a lot of saves, but a lot of quality saves to keep his team in it. And it's only a matter of time before the dam breaks, and he's not going to be able to continue this. So if you look at the, the goalie statistics, this is uh, goals saved above expected by Money Puck, and he's number one in the league, 14.2 goals saved above expected. So right now he's getting shelled, and he's holding up. But as soon as he starts to dip down this list, you're going to want to drop him. So now might be the time to, to sell high on a guy like Carter Hart because it's only a matter of time before he starts to, you know, revert back to the mean in terms of some of this data. Now, some of these other guys on this list could potentially keep it up. If you look at Connor Hellebuck, he's way above expected as well. So is Jake Ottinger and so is Ilya Sorokin. But if we look at expected goals against, you're going to see um, Winnipeg way down here, only 101 expected goals against, which could potentially indicate that Connor Hellebuck could keep this up because his team is playing decent defense. The issue comes with uh, Jake Ottinger because Dallas is actually kind of uh, towards the top of this list. So 127 expected goals against, 102 actual goals against, which means Jake Ottinger's playing out of his mind, and so is Scott Wedgwood when he's healthy. So both of these goalies are doing what they're supposed to do. It probably is sustainable just given his talent level. Sometimes you have to use the eye test with some of these things. Ilya Sorokin's an incredible goaltender, and it is a little bit alarming to see the Islanders at 134 and sixth worst in the league in terms of expected goals against. We usually think of them as a defensive team, um, but actually they're getting it done with offense this year instead of uh, defense, and goaltending is obviously playing a factor here. 
But then you see Linus Allmark. He's playing better than expected, and Boston is third best in the league in terms of expected goals. So this is kind of how you can use the data. And if you see, Linus Allmark's the best goalie in fantasy right now because of that. So what you're getting, what you're getting at the top of this list are goalies who are playing uh, above expectations in terms of what they're stopping, in terms of quality chances and whatnot. And then they're also getting help from their defense. So here's Boston. Hellebuck is second. Here's Winnipeg. Uh, Logan Thompson's right here. Here's Vegas. You can see Georgiev. Here's Colorado. Jake Ottinger. Obviously, we just mentioned that Dallas is a little bit higher. Islanders are a little bit higher. Um, Vitek Vanacek. He is exactly, if you look at the numbers here, he's at 0.7. Uh, goals saved above expected nothing crazy there and the reasoning is because the devils are limiting a ton of uh, high danger chances against if you look at this metric they're number one in terms of limiting high danger shots against and their expected goals is number one in the league so you're getting Vitek Vanacek playing extremely well here uh, Shesterkin, Sorokin both of these are excellent goaltenders and the Rangers are towards the bottom of this list as well so you're getting good goaltending and good team defense so this is kind of what you want to look at in terms of advanced stats and helping you make better decisions with your goaltending because if you can get a goalie who's playing above expectations and is also playing behind a good defensive uh, system or structure or whatever you want to call it that's not going to give up a ton of high danger chances or give the puck away in their own end then you have a better chance of shoring up your goaltending for your fantasy team now my personal teams, uh, I have Jordan Bennington, who's been climbing up this list. Uh, and they were, you know, obviously on an eight game losing streak. They came right back with an eight game winning or seven game winning streak at, at this point in time. Um, but now they're much better defensively and they're right here in terms of expected goals against. So that's a promising sign. You see, Nashville is way at the other end of the spectrum. I have UC Soros. So is that a good hold? Well, if you look at the expected goals against 134, but then the actual goals against 122. So both Soros and Lankinen are playing better than expectations. And on top of that, I went over in the Global Series video that I did earlier this year, teams that are coming back from Europe typically play below 500 hockey for about 10 games or so. Then they can start to turn it around and play uh, what they're supposed to play at. So if it's a really good top five team, they'll start playing at a top five pace. If they're a bottom team, then they'll continue to play at that level. So Nashville is about a mid-pack team. They should be a playoff team. Unfortunately, their defensive numbers are taking a hit because of that. Um, but the, both goaltenders are playing pretty well. In terms of waiver pickups, Keith Kincaid is on this list. He has one start in terms of you know why he's 103 overall. One start, but it's for Boston. As we can see right here, Boston's one of the best in defensive teams in the league. Akira Schmid is going to be a good waiver pickup uh, for the foreseeable future because the Devils are number one in the league in terms of expected goals against and high danger chances against. So this is kind of how you can pick up waiver pickups, how you can navigate uh, trade offers that are coming into you. You don't want to just make a trade for a goalie because he's a good goalie and you, th you believe in him or whatever. You want to use the data to your advantage and try to see what is happening in terms of the uh, defensive structure in front of him. So a guy like Aiden Hill, he was playing much better than this uh, personally. He's a, you know slipped a little bit, but Vegas' team defense is extremely good. So he's a guy that if he's on your waiver wire, you could definitely uh, try to stream him. He's only 27% owned right now. Kevin Lankinen, he's getting the start tonight. Uh, only 4% owned, and as you know, we're looking at some of the uh, advanced metrics, he's not that great uh, in terms of expected goals against. Um, if you look at the high danger chances against, they're actually a lot better than what they are in terms of expected. So they're not giving up a ton of high danger chances. It's more the medium danger that they're giving up uh, that their goaltending is having a problem with. But right now they're starting to figure it out. So he could be another waiver option. So this is just a little uh, insight into how you can use the data to your advantage. Um, and again, you can find this and a lot of other dashboards that I've created for fantasy hockey purposes uh, in the Patreon link in the description below. And then you can kind of pair this with what you already are watching in terms of, uh, you know, watching the games and seeing which goalies are playing well and what you know about fantasy hockey. This is how you can make better decisions. And I've kind of turned my goaltending around. Um, for the first like five weeks, I didn't win anything because I did not have uh, my goalies were you know playing pretty poorly and Pittsburgh was a big reason with that uh, seven or eight game losing streak they had. I had both of the Pittsburgh goalies, but I've started to turn it around using the data. 
Uh, so this is how you can kind of gain a competitive advantage against your competition. So I just wanted to bring this to your attention uh, right before Thanksgiving and kind of give you a look at some of these teams. Some of these teams that are giving up a ton of high danger chances against, uh, these are pretenders to, a, to an extent. Obviously, Florida, um, they're a little bit, you know, Florida, Dallas, the Islanders, Edmonton. These should all be bubble teams come at the end of the year uh, just because of the amount of uh, defensive lapses they've had. Now, Florida had injuries. That might be a factor there. Washington had injuries on their blue line. That might be a factor. So you do have to use eye test as well. But this is just a general sense of how you can use the data to make better decisions with your fantasy goaltending uh, because obviously it's been very difficult to find reliable goaltending, especially three guys to have in your lineup uh, on a regular basis that can get you wins and get you save percentage and goals against and everything else that you need. Um, so that's going to do it for this video. I want to thank you for sticking with it all the way to the end. Um, make sure to follow me on Instagram. I'm doing a lot of shorter content on there. Uh, if I don't have time to do a full YouTube video, I'll be posting on Instagram. Uh, I just highlighted on Instagram the Jeff Skinner pickup that I was highlighting in the week seven uh, schedule video. Um, I said that Jeff Skinner was going to be the best ad on Tuesday night, and he certainly was. Two goals, three assists, five points. Uh, and you can find a lot of other interesting stuff on the Instagram at data underscore draft uh, on Instagram again. Uh, but thank you again for watching, and I will see you in the next one.